It is cold today. Hey guys, I'm Tom the Tech Chap, and as you may be able to tell, I'm not in a studio today because this is gonna be a bit of a different video. Now I'm incredibly lucky as a YouTube creator that I get to travel all over the world for product launches, conferences, conventions. And one of the things I've had to learn to do is shoot on the go. Well, shoot, edit, publish, make YouTube videos on the fly with nothing more than what's in my backpack, including travel tripods, GoPros, lavalier mics, gorilla pods. So I wanna share with you guys some of my top tips and tricks for making videos when you're out and about. A big thanks to HMA VPN for helping make this video possible, and also by having by far the best name for a VPN provider, HMA or Hide My Ass. It's fast, secure, and I use it to stay safe while browsing when I'm traveling, and maybe watch a bit of US Netflix when I'm at home in the UK. And with nearly 300 locations in 190 countries, check out the link in the description if you want to give it a try, and I'll tell you more about it at the end of the video. First up, if you get the option, pick an airline that offers in-flight Wi-Fi. I fly with Norwegian Air all the time as they offer great value fares, the upgrade to premium isn't too expensive, plus they've introduced Wi-Fi on most of their flights. A few months ago, I was on a 10 hour flight and I wanted to edit a video in Premiere Pro, but as soon as I opened it up, it asked me to log in and sign in and because I didn't have an internet connection, basically I couldn't get any work done at all. So yeah, Wi-Fi, especially on a long flight, can be very useful. One of the first things I do when I arrive in a new place is go on the hunt for great places to film, whether it's your fancy hotel lobby, a nearby coffee shop, a local park, or maybe even in the middle of Times Square. So you may recognize this setup. It's my studio at home in the UK, but I shoot less than half of my videos here. I was in New York the other day, and a roof terrace with natural light and some cool backdrops was far nicer than my dingy hotel room for filming the phone. It can be a bit unnerving filming in public places, but that's why I find gorilla pods are so useful as you can keep a pretty low profile. And generally like this, I'll record my voiceover afterwards rather than talking straight to camera in the middle of a Starbucks. Oh, and if you are recording a VO back at the hotel, put a couple of pillows in front of you or pull the bed sheets over your head to give you much better acoustics. I promise you, every YouTuber has done this at some point. If they haven't, they're lying or they've never stayed in an echoey hotel room. So I always carry a gorilla pod with me because, well, it's really good for gorilla shooting when you don't want to attract any attention, no security guards asking for permits. You can attach it to anything from railings to trees. And of course you can also use it to vlog with the camera on there like that. But sometimes there is no substitute for a proper tripod. And if you are out and about shooting by yourself and you don't have a camera person or a friend you can get to hold the camera, having a tripod is really, really useful. I've gone for the Manfrotto B3 travel tripod with a fluid head on top. And once it's shrunk down, it's not much bigger than my backpack. Okay, here's a quick tip. Now, if you're ever filming in bright sunshine like this, doesn't happen in the UK very often, I've had to set my camera, the GH5, to ISO 100 and the aperture all the way down to F22, so I'm not completely blown out by this really bright direct sunlight. And so see what happens when I then raise it to something like f2.8. Yeah, I'm still here. So the solution is one of these, an ND filter. And if I just clip it on to the front of the lens so I can widen the aperture, let's put it back to f2.8 and it looks really nice. And you get a bit more of a blurred background. I can adjust the filter, I can just twist it. It's a variable ND filter and you can see how that's affecting the image. And the result is I can use a much wider aperture because without it, it looks a bit like that. Unless of course I put it to f22 again, and then you've lost all that background blur. Now it's not so much of a travel tip, but one of my favorite things to do when shooting video is to actually shoot in slow motion, which I think gives B-roll, those sexy fancy product shots, a much more cinematic look but you don't actually need a dedicated slow motion mode in your camera. As long as your camera or even your phone can shoot 60 frames per second, you can actually get slow motion. So on my Panasonic GH5, I can shoot in 4K 60, which when you play it back normally, just looks too smooth and you have that sort of soap opera effect. But in the edit afterwards, you can slow it down to half speed or 30 frames per second. Of course, it's not quite as slow as a proper 180 or 240 FPS slow motion, but pretty much every camera can shoot at 60 FPS. So any of you can do this. And I think it can make a big difference to your videos. So let's say you are using a tripod like this. It's about 15 feet away from me. If I put a shotgun mic on top, it would pick up all the sound going on around me and you'd barely be able to hear my voice which is why I use one of these, a lavalier mic or a lapel mic. 
So this is a Sennheiser ME2. I've got the uh, cord going under my shirt here to try and hide it. It's just balanced on the top of my t-shirt and that's running into a Zoom H1 recorder. So all I need to do is press record on the camera and then press it on the mic and I've got video and audio coming from here. So you're not picking up anywhere near as much ambient sound. And when I'm done, I just press it again. It's saved onto a micro SD card slot, pop it in the laptop. And usually when I start a video, I'll clap a couple of times. So in the edit, I can see those audio spikes. All in, we're looking at about 200 pounds for the mic and the recorder. When it comes to making YouTube videos, shooting the video is only half the battle. Then you've got to edit it. I record at 4K and use Adobe Premiere Pro. And for 4K editing, I'd recommend that your laptop or your PC has at least 16 gigs of RAM. Although as you can see, it'll easily use 24 gigs. So if you can upgrade to 32, that will help. A dedicated graphics card will also help with certain tasks. But I found the most important component when it comes to video editing is the processor, the CPU. Ideally try and get an i7 or even a new i9, but with an H suffix like the i7 8750H that I have in this Dell you'll see much faster render times with these more powerful chips. One super easy tip when you're traveling abroad and maybe you're staying in a hotel room and you've got a billion charges and plugs for your camera and your phone and your laptop and you need adapters for everything is to bring one extension lead. And then all you have to do is bring one plug adapter. I'm in the US at the moment, so I can just pop that on there and then plug all my UK plugs into here. And it just saves a lot of space in my bag. For storage and as a backup, I use a Samsung T5 SSD. It's smaller, much faster, and more reliable than a traditional hard drive since there's no moving parts on the SSD. I have the one terabyte model that costs about 200 pounds, although there is a newer X5 model, but that only works with Thunderbolt 3, and it costs about twice as much. And to be honest, the speeds of the T5, up to 500 megabytes per second read and write, is more than quick enough for my needs. I take this thing everywhere I go, and I highly recommend it. So I hope you found some of those tips and tricks useful. And if you think I've missed any good ones out, let me know in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching, guys. Hit that like and subscribe button if you want to see more of my videos. And I'll see you next time right here on The Tech Chat. A big thanks to HMA or Hide My Ass VPN for sponsoring this video. With features like IP Shuffle, which keeps changing our IP address so it's more secure, and with nearly 300 locations in 190 countries, you always get a great connection and low ping, which is ideal for gaming or streaming 4K Netflix movies. As well as the VPN, they also offer free privacy tools on the website, including tests for DNS and WebRTC leaks, which are definitely worth checking. So if you need a secure and reliable VPN, check out HMA, and if you use the promo code TECHCHAP20, you can get 20% off a 12 month plan. Not too shabby. So if you fancy giving it a try, I've put a link in the description below.